In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install turn signals on the Ariel Rider X-Class 52 volt. And the way that I did it was I had no external power source and no step downs. So I hardwired it directly into the existing wires, power source and switch. I just want to point out that there are a couple of minor imperfections due to the wiring workaround that I had to do. The tail light doesn't work. When you press the high beam, it turns on the front headlight as well as the tail light, which is a dim red light signifying that your headlight is on. And I just want to clarify the tail light and the brake light are two different things. The brake light is when you press the brakes, it gets a little brighter. So they're both red, but the brake light is a little bit brighter than the tail light. You're going to have to flip your turn signal switch upside down and as the video progresses i will show you why exactly i had to do those things so the things that you're gonna need to do this mod is 12 volt through 60 volt turn signals meaning that they would work on any power source between 12 volts and 60 volts so that's going to be linked in the description some mounting hardware these are for the back and the ones for the front forks are already installed on the bike. Zip ties, two core electrical wire. That means that there's two wires, one negative, one positive. A pair of scissors and some strippers. Electrical tape, this heat gun for the shrink tubing and some heat shrink tubing and this is a digital multimeter this is also useful if you want to test the wires and see the voltage and make sure everything is running properly it's optional as well as uh, you could probably get away with doing this without using the heat shrink tubing just uh, advise against that and the rest of the stuff you can probably get at your local hardware store or home depot or even online First thing you're gonna do is remove any tank bags, triangle bag, and seat to expose the top tube so you have a clear and open working space. And there it is. Next, you're gonna mount your light mounting hardware onto the forks. And that is my mounting hardware for the back. And this is the front turn signal. So you're gonna have to add this wire the amount of length it takes to go all the way to the back to this wire right here and add a little extra just so you have some wiggle room there all right so now you're going to just cut this extra wire off starting from this black part about an inch up just get rid of that wire because we don't need that. And then you're going to get your strippers and make sure you choose the right size. There's a couple of different sizes there. So whatever size your wire is, and you're gonna cut off about uh, three quarter inches off of that, right? And then you're gonna go ahead and just twist this exposed copper so they're not all over the place. And make sure you're twisting it clockwise. This black is gonna be the negative and these two extra wires are your positive. There's two wires that are positive here because one of them is for the actual turn signal, which is a sequential yellow light. And then on the back side, there is a little green light that is an indicator for you to see if your turn signal is on or off. Make sure when you have your extension cord, pick a side and mark it as negative. I'm gonna mark one side as negative with a piece of black tape. So that way I know which is positive and which is negative. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just mark this side with some tape. Now I know that this part with the black tape on it is my negative and the other side is the positive. So what you're gonna do is follow where you put that tape on, that wire all the way to the other side. And then, so this is the other side right here. 
So then I'm just gonna mark it off with some tape and there you go. Now both sides are marked so you won't get confused. And now you're gonna get your negative wire and the negative on this one, which is the black one. And just go ahead and twist those together. Once those are nice and twisted together, you're gonna get yourself a piece of tape, however much you think is gonna cover the exposed wire and just go ahead and wrap that around your wire so that these exposed wires aren't touching each other. You never wanna to touch a negative to a positive. Now you're gonna get these two remaining wires, the orange and the blue, and twist those together. Tie them onto the remaining wire on your extension. All right, and then just put some tape on that to seal it up. So then you're gonna get your proper size shrink tubing and put it in there and over the electrical tape and wire that you just spliced. Make sure it's nice and covered. Then you get your heat gun, turn it to the low heat setting. Uh, and it's best if you start from the middle and then work your way out to the edges. So there you have it. That's the finished product. And you're gonna just go ahead and do that for all four of your turn signals. Now that all your wires are sliced together, mount them back onto the bike, route the wires, roughly where you would put them all the way until they reach this wire right here. Now, this wire right here, you're gonna pull out some of the extra wiring that is inside of this tube. Uh, so you have about this much exposed and that way you can, when you cut it later and everything is done, you'll be able to tuck the spliced wire back into this tube so it's nice and protected from the elements. Now let's go ahead and cut this wire. So one thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna label these two sides of the wires. So you're gonna label one one and you're gonna label one two. And that's gonna be important because obviously they are identical colors on both sides because they came out of the same wire. But there's certain wires that you need coming out of this end and there's certain wires that you need coming out of this end. And so we're gonna just label them so we're going to label one side with a one and the other side with a two so you're going to label the side that's coming out of the uh the inside of this two we're going to label that one so we get this get that number one and there it is and then we get our number two and put the number two on the other wire all right, now we have our two wires and we won't get them confused. Let me get our strippers and expose about an inch, inch and a half of wire there. Same with the other side. So here you're gonna have five wires. Now I'm gonna explain what each wire does. So the blue one is the right turn signal. The yellow is the left turn signal. The red, is the tail light slash high beam. The green one is the brake lights and the black is your negative. So the problem that I was running into was that these turn signals are 12 volt through 60 volt turn signals. So that means that they work on any of those voltages between 12 to 60. And for some reason, Ariel Rider programmed their turn signals to run at 57 volts, which is basically the 52 volt, and that's the on position. But when it's on the opposite turn signal, basically the off position, there's still current running through it, which is at 51 volts. So every time that I turn the turn signal either to the left or to the right, the turn signal that I was testing was still on. And so I'm gonna show an example of 
what was happening there? When I touched the left turn signal to the stock X-Class wires, it turns on, right? But then when I go to the right turn signal, it's still on, even though I'm on the left turn signal wire. And it does that for the both the left and the right. After you've exposed the wires, now you can start connecting what which wires to which wires. So the number that we marked two, you're gonna take the yellow wire from the number two side, connect it to the blue from the number one side. You're gonna take the red wire from the number two side and connect it to the yellow wire from the number one side. Then connect the black to the black and the green to the green and leave the two remaining wires which are the blue from the number two side and the red from the number one side. So now what you're gonna do is get both of your right side turn signals and tie the two negatives together. Take your two positives and tie them to the red and yellow wires. So just tie them around the red and yellow wires. And now you can take your left side turn signals, tie those two negatives together, and tie the two positives around the yellow and blue wire. Now you're gonna take these two negatives that you twisted together and the other two negatives they twisted together from the left and right turn signal sides. So that's four different wires. You're gonna take all four of those negatives and tie it around the black wire that is remaining, which is a negative. And the only remaining wire that's left is the green. You're just gonna put a little bit of tape on that so that it's not touching any of the other wires. Take them all up individually, then just put a zip tie on it so all the force is on the wires and not on the exposed copper so they don't pull apart easily. Now just get a heat shrink tubing and place it over all this exposed electrical tape and shrink it. So now that that's sealed up, we can tuck this wire back into that hole right there. And we're gonna zip tie our wire to this tube right here all the way across and make sure that these are tied under here as well test all the lights and see if they work so that's the turn signal over there it's another one over here and i switch it to the other side and everything's working the only problem is that the left is the right and the right is the left. So this, we're gonna have to flip it upside down. We gotta remove this, remove this, remove the brake, and then we can remove this and flip it over. The turn signals are inverted and the reason why this is happening is because the signals are essentially running on the off position, AKA the opposite side turn signals with one side routed through both wires spliced to the opposite side wires completing a 51.9 volt circuit that Ariel programmed onto the opposite wire turn signal switch and no power to the 57.9 volt side which is the on side but that way it's acting as a shutoff with the other side turn signals running through one turn signal wire routed through the tail light wire that provides a 57.9 volts when on and zero volts when off to provide a shutoff and another turn signal wire to complete the circuit. I'm not the greatest at explaining something, especially since I just learned how to do this. If it didn't come across in my explanation, definitely reach out to me and I will respond. Thanks to everybody who commented on the original post that I made and thanks for watching.